Hi there. Uh, in, this, uh, in this short tutorial I just wanted to take a look at chromatic aberration. This is a, a term which is also known as colour fringing or sometimes purple fringing. Uh, and it's an optical aberration effectively that occurs when the lens is either unable to bring all the wavelengths of colour to the same focal plane or when the wavelengths of colour are focused at different positions on the focal plane. So this kind of lens dispersion, we often see people in post-production actually creating it as a retro effect. But I wanted to just do something a little bit different, which is just use Nuke to show a way of actually removing it from a shot. So if I just move in on this image and we just take a look around these frets at this end, we can see evidence of purple fringing along this side of this fret and a little bit green fringing along the other side. So let's look at how we can build um, a little node rig to, uh, to address this. Okay, so I'll just pull this up a little bit to make a bit of space. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a shuffle node in, into, the, into the pipe. And I'll just split that out. In fact, I'll split it a couple of times because I'm going to be creating one of these for each of the red, green and blue channels. But for the sake of this one, what I want to do is I just want to put all the other colour channels into black and just leave the red open. So we've only got our red colour channel active. So I'm now going to copy this and paste it a couple of times. One for the green and one for the blue. So this one can be for the green. So I'll just open this up and again do the same. So this time I want to put everything into the black except the green channel. So if we just put our viewer onto this then we see the green data. And similarly for the blue, and again just hook up the blue and then disable disable all the channels except the blue channel. Okay, got that a little bit wrong. Okay, so there we go. So we've got um, we've got data in the red, green, and blue channels, but we've now got them separated out. Okay, so we can now start to um, reconstruct this as an RGB image. And to do this, I'm just going to use the the shuffle copy node. There may be better ways of doing it than this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the number one pipe into the red and the number two pipe into the green. Okay, so if I just open the shuffle copy node, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the red from input 1 and I'm going to take the green from input 2 and I'm going to shuffle both of those into the RGBA. So I can close off the, uh, the blue channel and the alpha channel at this particular stage and if I just took the viewer up to this we can start to see the image coming back together. This is basically the composition of red and green channels but without the blue channel at this stage. Okay, So I'm going to now copy this and paste it. So now what we've got in this shuffle copy is the red and the green channel. So I'm going to bring in the red and the green channel I'll just connect my viewer to this. Okay, it's going to look a little bit strange while I'm just hooking it up. But for this one, I'm going to take my red and green channel and bring them in from the number one side of the pipe. And then I'm going to bring the blue channel in from the blue side of the pipe, from the number two side. So we've now back to our red, green and blue image. We haven't dealt with the uh, the chromatic aberration yet, but we can now get at each of these channels separately. So I'm just going to pull this down slightly just to make a little bit of room because we're going to intervene at this point here, which is after the channels have been split before they've been re re reconstituted. Okay, so to do this I'm going to add a transform node and I'll put one below each of the three shuffles. And I'm sure you're getting the premise here. Each of these transform nodes essentially mean that we can nudge the uh, the colour channels individually or the separate colour channels separate without, without uh, altering either of the others. So we can essentially reconstruct and realign the red, green and blue channels. So let's just zoom in and just take a, a slightly closer look at this, at this artifact that we see. 
we can see that the colors are green and magenta okay so these colors are both in the green channel and that suggests that the misalignment is in the red and possibly the blue channels so we'll start with the red so I'll open up the transform properties for the red and we will try moving the issue seems to be in the horizontal axis so we will try just moving this across by one pixel okay we can see that I actually made it worse what we've actually done is pushed it in the wrong direction so let's just take it into the negatives okay that's already starting to look better it's already starting to look like we've got our red channel aligned with the green channel okay so let's try accessing the blue channel again we want to be accessing the horizontal axis and let's try nudging this one and again we're going in the wrong direction so again once if we turn this into a negative value and Bob's your uncle we can see that we've realigned the chromatic aberration on this image so this was an example of lateral aberration which was which meant that we were actually realigning the image on the uh, on the horizontal scale if we were dealing with longitudinal uh, aberration which is where the lines were would have been on horizontal planes then we would have been nudging horizontally in or should I say vertically instead to a line up but the principles the same hopefully if you've been following along with this you should be able to uh, deal with uh, chromatic aberration now using this technique and I hope you found that useful